Welcome to this Excel tutorial where I'm going to show you quick tips for turning this static data into dynamic, visually appealing data where we can very quickly get actionable insights. Like that maybe we need to look a little bit closer at Alex Brown over here. Hit the plus icon. Now we have his email. Call him in for a meeting and ask him what's going on with his sales. The best part about this setup that I'm going to show you how to do is that we can very quickly add additional data to it and it's automatically linked to everything else. So we go down here, we add Bob. Let's say Bob is a high performer. There we go. He's automatically added to the chart, automatically added to our filter over here. Everything connected, dynamic, easy to work with. And make sure to download this file from teachexcel.com. It is completely free and I'll put a link to it below this video. And while you're there, make sure to check out our Excel courses that teach you how to automate your workflow and save hours of time every week. I'll also put a link to those courses and give you a nice little discount below this video. But now let us go from boring static data to something actionable and useful. You've just exported some sales data, but you want to go through it in Excel. The very first step, click in the data and turn it into a table either control T or insert table. Make sure you have some descriptive headers. Hit OK. Now you've got a table. This is the basis for allowing dynamic data connections between this guy and your chart and these nice visual filter options, which are called slicers. Next tip is to add a slicer. Click in your data and go to table design, insert slicer. What a slicer does is it allows you to visually filter. You'll see one item here for every column. Give your columns useful descriptive names. I'd like a list of all of the salespeople. I'm going to click the name column. Okay. There we go. So we see name here, name there, and then everybody here. And we can already begin to filter through it. If you click this guy, you can uncheck or unselect multiple names all at once. Click that to clear the filter. The alternative way is to click the drop down arrow and it's a little off the screen, but we have the old school filter right here. The very next tip is helper columns. Notice that over here we have sales goal and it's a little bit cut off, but that is reached with a question mark. So I can see who has met their sales goals and who has not, but that is not in our source data over here. What do we need to do? Add a helper column. All we need is a name that's descriptive up here and text that is easy for us to understand down here. So we can go right click, insert table columns to the left, sales goal reached question mark or whatever you want to put there. Remember, this will be the title over here and then oh, what values we want for the filter buttons down here. So what I want to do is to see if you made over 500,000 in sales. That's the important check equals if this is greater than 500,000. What buttons do I want in my filter? Well, if you reached your goals, then yes. If you did not, then no. Hit enter. And since we have a table, it fills the formula all the way down. Tables are amazing. Then we can go to table design, insert slicer, and sales goal reached. There we go. Our new column with the easy to read values who made it and who didn't. You can add as many helper columns as you want. The idea is to make it so that it's easy for you to get all of the information that you need to get. And we can resize it, play around with it. One tip for slicers is click the slicer, go to slicer and adjust the columns. If you want multiple columns, which is what we will do with uh, this guy and make it fit a little better. Next up, let's add the dynamic chart and let's put some dollar signs here. So we select sales amount, 
and a little bit of formatting. Then just click anywhere in the table, insert, select your chart type over here. And pretty much it's going to mess up the chart. That is because it does not know what to put on the chart. So we can click it, go to chart design, select data, and uh, let's rebuild our chart. So I just hit remove right there. We can go add series name, sales amount, click down here, and select the entire column. Okay. Horizontal labels edit. And these guys right here, the name of the salesperson. Okay. Okay. Click away. There we go. And at this point, if I move this over a little bit, if we go down to the end of our table and hit tab, we can type in a new entry for Bob. And let's say he is a great salesman. There we go. He's on the chart. We can filter by him. Everything is as we wish it to be. Minus a few formatting things. But at this point, you've got all the dynamic connections set up and working. All the hard stuff is done. If you want to get this file that you see here, make sure to download it from teachexcel.com. I'll put a link to it below this video. And check out our full Excel courses that teach you how to automate Excel and streamline your workflow, taking you from beginner to expert in automating Excel. Over 200 tutorials, over 200 downloadable files. You are going to save yourself an amazing amount of time if you check out our courses. Now let's tidy this up a little bit and make it a bit more useful. First off, our table. Is there anything that we really don't need to display? Well, I don't think we need our helper column. So I'm going to click that column, right click it, go to hide. Now what about these columns over here? I don't always need them, but I might need them. Like when I want to call, who was it? Alex in for a meeting. I want to be able to find his email very easily. So let's select these three columns. Then we can go to a data and outline over here on the right and hit group. Click away. There we go. Now we've got this up here. Hit the minus sign and it collapses. Plus sign, it expands. A very nice way to hide data that you don't need right now, but you want to make very easily accessible. And as I've been doing this, you may have noticed that this has been moving. It's been moving over our slicers. One quick tip for that, right click. And it is just now off the screen, but hit format chart area. Go to size and properties. Properties, don't move or size with cells. Now it doesn't move. Of course, that means when we hit the plus sign that some of the data is going to be overlapped, but you're just going to have to figure out what works best for you in that regard. Do you want to make it so it does move or size with cells? You can do the same thing with slicers if you right click and go to size and properties, which is just off the screen. And we have the same options down here under properties. Move and size with cells, move but don't size with cells, don't move or size with cells. And then let's close that. One more thing for the slicer, click this guy, go to slicer, click this right here and do snap to grid or snap to shape. Let's do snap to grid. That's going to mean that when I drag it around now, it snaps to cells. So we can take column H, make it a little smaller and kind of go like that. And it will help you to better organize your data, make it a bit more visually appealing. Let's make column L a little smaller. There we go, just about. And we can do it like that. Go to sales, make it bigger. And we are almost done. Formatting takes quite a long time. The other features you'll be able to input very quickly due to muscle memory. And of course, our formatting has been a little bit messed up. 
But the very next tip is the final one. Make column E a little bigger. Go to a view, uncheck grid lines. Close this guy. Of course, I didn't make it big enough to fit there. <laughs> there we go. All right, now we're done. If you like this tutorial, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can see all of my future tutorials as well. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to download this file. It's completely free. That way you don't have to build it all from scratch. I'll put a link to it below this video. And when you are there, check out our full Excel courses. That's all for this tutorial. I'll see you next time.